Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the 10th episode of the Glide tutorial. Um, this one's gonna be a little bit more relaxed because, you know, it's the 10. That's a milestone. Congratulations, you made it that far. But uh, we're gonna be looking at making the fade in and also fade out for both the menu scene and also the game scene. So it's really just a polished episode. We're gonna try to make things look nice. So let's get right into it. I feel like we should start with the easiest one. So let's head over to the game scene. And under the canvas we have here, we are going to create a new object, image. Let's call this one fade. Let's also make sure we stretch it on the boat axis. And here we go, we've got our fade already. Make sure you also add a canvas group because that's what we've been using to do our fade using the alpha field, this one right here. And then we're going to jump on scripting that thing. So let's open up the game scene, uh, the game scene script and add some fields at the very top here. We need three of those, the first one being the canvas group. So let's just call it fade group. Let's create a float called fade in duration. So fade in duration, that's for of course, how long the fade in is going to last for. And a Boolean for game start. So we know if the game is uh, completely ready to play or not. Now we're going to push down these two functions and give some space for both the start and also the update. So on the start, of course, let's get the fade group. So fade group is equal to find object of type canvas group. And then let's also make sure we set it to white. So the same exact thing we've been doing um, in the other scene. In fact, I'm going to put the same exact comments. So get the only uh, canvas group in the scene. And let's make sure the screen is fully opaque. So set the fade to full opacity. So the comments were something like that as well. Uh, it's the same exact thing as we've done before. So we're going to declare a update as well. So private void update. And that was really bad writing, but it worked anyway. So um, if time, time since level loaded is smaller or equal to fade in duration, then this is our initial fade in. And what we do in the initial fade in is fade group dot alpha is equal to one minus time time since level load divided by the fade in duration here. So this is actually going to make sure our fade in lasts two seconds instead of one. Now we're gonna have a else if statement down here and that's only to check if the initial fade in, so if the initial fade in is completed, that is the call right here, let's check uh, if the game has been started or not. So, and the game has not been started yet. So if we're no longer in the initial fade in and the game has not been started, we're gonna have this else if statement right here. So game is not started. We just need to do this once and we're gonna say, well, first game is going to start now, but also fade group that alpha is now equal to zero. And this is just to ensure that the fade is completely gone. What could have happened if we didn't do this is that uh, we might actually been a little bit above uh, zero in the alpha. So the alpha might have been something like 1.1 and then we'd see a little bit of the, uh, of the fade screen while the game is running and that would be really annoying. So just by doing this here, we're making sure that it's not gonna happen. So that's pretty much all I think we need to do in here. Let's uh, quickly test it out as we always do boot the game and for some reason I boot it in the wrong scene but as you can tell uh, that's the game scene if I just start real quick we get the nice fade in it lasts two seconds and uh, if we just try pressing on other stuff it's not gonna work um, as well first we have our inputs being blocked by the fade screen so we're gonna make sure we also um, we also make sure that this does not block the raycast so let's click on it remove the interactable and also remove the block raycast but then as you can tell, we get no reference because um, we didn't start from preloader basically. So just to make sure everything is clean, everything works, let's go ahead and test it out through the preloader. Go and say the fourth scene, why not? And as you can tell, we did get the nice fade in. Um, the only problem we have here is when we click on it, it's too fast and it doesn't look great. So we need to make sure we get some kind of cool effect when we click on the level we want. 
Now, the way we're going to be doing this is completely inside of the update on the menu scene. So again, more code in the menu scene, and it's going to be a good time. So at the very end here of our field declaration, we are going to declare some more fields. The first one is going to be public animation curve. And this one is just to make it more cool, more polish. Uh, it's going to be the entering level zoom curve. And then we're going to have three other fields. So private bool is entering level is equal to false. Private float zoom duration is equal to say something like three. It's going to take three seconds to enter the level basically. And then private float zoom transition, which is going to be kept um, for memory purpose. Okay, so now the fade in only happens when we are in the update, basically. So let's go down to the update. And right here, we're going to start working on our fade in. So entering level zoom, if we are entering the level, so if is entering level, then we're going to be adding, um, we're going to be adding some of the time to the zoom transition float. So zoom transition float. The way we're going to be doing this is by saying zoom transition is plus equal to one divided by the duration. So zoom duration times time dot delta time. Now, once we have that number, we're going to be changing the scale of the um, of the actual rec transform. So this is where it gets a little bit weird. We're going to be playing with the menu container to actually zoom on our level. So you know the little square we have, we're going to be zooming on it and it's going to be looking quite cool. So change the scale following the animation curve. The way we're going to go about doing this is by using the menu container, something we already have, we're going to be changing the scale. So local scale. And then let's do a vector three dot lerp. Or let's do a lerp on clamp. No, let's actually just do a lerp. Um, vector three dot one, because at the very beginning, when you start the animation, the menu container should be its full size, its normal size, and the normal size is one, one, one. Now, depending on how much you want it to scale, you're simply going to multiply that vector 3.1 by a number. In my case, five is pretty cool. I've tried it out before and it just, it fits perfectly with the effect I'm trying to achieve. And then finally, as far as the transition float, the T float at the end, we're going to be using our curve right here. So entering level zoom curve, evaluate at the zoom transition. And that's going to give us a point on the curve that is going to make it look good, basically. Um, and that's pretty much all we need to do for the scaling. I'd actually like to try this out before we go any further and make sure it works properly. But to make sure it works, we need to enable this, um, this float right here. So this float should be enabled whenever we click on the button. If we take this right here, the is entering level, and we go down to the, where is it? On the level select right down there, we are going to change the scene manager load scene by is entering level is now equal to true. So by doing this, we're no longer going to be entering the level right away. We're going to be playing our animation first. And then when our animation is complete, uh, we're going to keep on coding later on and have that logic. Let us enter the level. But right now, let's just try out the zoom. So when I press on any button, I should be zooming in the canvas itself. And we get a no reference exception. So what? Oh, I think the reference curve is not set. And uh, yeah, so let's go back in the menu scene, find the curve right here. And let's put a nice curve. So basically, this is going to control the speed at which the zoom is being completed. So um, let's go with something like this. Why not? If I just pull this like this, any curve is going to work basically, but any curve that goes from zero to one is going to work. Um, but we want to be creating that nice little start slowly and then zooms in fast or something like this. And as you can tell, we do get the zoom in. However, it does not look very good. It just zooms in um, at the random position. So what we need to do at the very same time that this gets bigger, we also need to move it so we can focus on what we've clicked on. So I had to do a little bit of mathematics to make this work. But basically, let me just uh, comment this and share with you the algorithm I came up with. So change the desired position of the canvas. So it can follow so it can follow the scale up basically, the problem we just face it. 
So this is going to zoom in the center. This zooms in the center and is going to be a new vector called new desired position is going to equal to desired menu position times five. This is going to help you actually zoom in um, on the on the actual menu on the left side. So the level selection menu, you can now zoom in in the middle of that. But we don't really want to be zooming in in the middle. We want to be zooming in on the very specific dot that we've uh, we clicked on the very specific button we've clicked. So we're going to be modifying this new desired position, and this adds to the specific so specific position of the level on the canvas. And it goes like this. So basically, um, I start by declaring a rec transform. So rec transform that I'll call position, or let's just call it RT in this case, is equal to level panel get child manager instance current level get component. We're getting the rec transform component. And then we're going to say new desired position, which is the one we calculated up here, is minus equal to RT dot anchored position 3D times 5. Now, 5 is the constant we keep using everywhere. So uh, we do a zoom of 5 here. And we have to do it here as well and also there. And that is pretty much how you zoom in the proper object. And now, of course, we actually need to update the position of the menu container. But if you guys remember, we already have something up here that updates the position of the container. But if we do it down here, it is going to override it. So, so what we're going to be saying right here is that this lines, uh, this line will override. That's two R, right? Override the previous position update. And we're going to say menu container anchored position is equal to a vector 3.lerp with the desired menu position. This is where it should be right now. So it's pointing on the um, on the level selection and the new desired position. We're going to be using the same exact curve as the zoom transition float right here. So we end up with something like this. So we have the scale, we have the zoom in. We're still missing one more thing in here. We actually need to put the fade to white as well. So let's do down there, fade to white screen. And this will, of course, overwrite, uh, overwrite, or override, let's do overwrite again, <laughs> the first line of the update in this case. Because at the beginning, we already play with the fade, but we have to overwrite it in this case. So we're going to say fade group dot alpha is equal to zoom transition. And finally, the last, the very last thing we need to do here is if we're done with the zoom transition, if we're done with the zooming, let's go ahead and load up the actual scene. So are we done with the animation? If we are, let's go ahead and do a enter the level. So basically a scene manager dot load scene we enter the game scene, finally. So all this code just to create that nice little effect that you're going to be seeing in a moment. So let's have a look. And here we are in our game right now. We click here and let's go ahead and just choose level two, see what happens. And it just zooms in the level two with the fade to white. And then we get the, um, the fade in this level when we enter it. So everything is really smooth. Everything looks very good. And we finally made it. Uh, one last thing I'd like to do before I actually end this episode, since I'm tired of seeing the, um, the default skybox in the end, I'm going to go in the asset store and just grab my favorite skybox. So if I hit control and nine on the keyboard, I'm going to head over to the, uh, the free skybox that we can actually download of the asset store. So I'm currently logged in right here and I'm going to type in free skybox. And it should actually pop up in the very first result, I believe. And here it is. I use the Fantasy Skybox because it's just, it looks so good and it's free. So I'm going to actually hit download on this if I can find the download button and import it to my project. But I am not going to be importing everything. I'll simply be importing the, um, the texture and also the material. So let's just take the texture and the material. Everything else I don't really want. 
So here we go, importing the whole package. At this point, all I need to do to actually change the, uh, the skybox is simply go in every single one of the scene and drag and drop the material. So we're going to be doing that in a moment as soon as this is completed. And let's go in the preloader first. Even though we're never going to be in the preloader, I just like to do it because reason. Um, I'm going to be dragging this in my artwork folder, by the way. Then choose material. Let's go for a nice sunny, sunny A or sunny B. Let's go with sunny A. Or actually, no, sunny B is, look, is looking better right here. Um, same thing for the menu scene. So sunny B. And same thing for the game scene. Going to save everything, have a final look at my game for this final episode. And just realize how good it is. Wow, amazing. It looks so much better with a skybox. Now all it needs is an actual player in the menu, but it looks very good right now for, for just a menu, since we don't have anything else in the game. I think it looks pretty good, and this is actually where I'm going to be ending today's episode. So guys, thank you so much for watching. Like the video, share it around, share the whole tutorial around. Talk about it on Reddit if you have nothing to do, because I don't use Reddit that much, and apparently it's very good for views. But yeah, click on the video right now on the screen if you'd like to move on to the next episode. And let me check my list right now. What do we have in the next episode? We have, oh, we're, we're talking about the plane model. Oh.